Hi, welcome to our Book Talk podcast. My name is Kelly Frierstead, and I'm with Chelsea Birmingham, and we're going to discuss The Forging of the Blade by R.L. LaFierce. It belongs to language arts, and the genre is fantasy and magic and historical fiction. It won the Texas Blue Bonnet Award in 2006, and it usually is read in grade levels 2 and up. And now from the perspective of two young children, listen to this book talk. Hey, Chelsea, did you hear this really cool book that came out? Yes, I have. Are you talking about the one that all of our friends got too? My mom let me buy it with my allowance. Once I picked it up, I couldn't set it down. Yeah, it's called The Forging of the Blade. It's really cool. I almost got done reading it in just one afternoon, but I got in trouble for not doing my homework, so I had to quit. I finished it the next day. Yeah, I got in trouble too. I was supposed to be doing chores and I kind of let time slip by me. Who was your favorite character? Oh my, the goblin. He was so cool. He's scary at the beginning when he gives Kenrick a hard time, but he ends up being the most loyal at the end. I would have been too scared to even venture in his cave. Kenrick sure was brave. Kenrick was guilty since he had trespassed into the cave and realized too late that someone lived there. But it was too late for him to leave because the goblin stood in his way. In a threatening voice, Nagy kept telling Kenrick he would kill him and eat him or just feed him to the wolves. I love that part when Kenrick went into the cave. It was so suspenseful. I thought for sure Nagy was going to kill Kenrick. Kenrick was so exhausted from his travel. I wondered if he was going to be able to fight off Nagy. I know, right? I would have been so scared if I turned around and saw it was a goblin. He was just like all the stories we heard as children. Guess not much has changed since Kenrick heard stories like that, too. Remember the stories about goblins and trolls? Not to mention that this little goblin was covered in filth and had pointy ears and even more pointy teeth. His looks and behavior lived up to all the frightening tales. Talk about those pointed teeth. His breath smelled horrible, too. It made sense that his breath was so bad because he ate a raw rabbit. How disgusting. It was odd how Nagy thought Kenrick was ruining his rabbit because he wanted to cook it before he ate it. Good thing there was a fire going so Kenrick could cook his rabbit. Yeah, thank goodness he got to eat after all. Through that small skull, they came to agreement that they would not hurt each other. In fact, this is where the story changes course and Kenrick is now not traveling alone. And Nagy likes that he wants to rescue his trapped father and tells Kenrick that he will have to kill the evil one. I know, and it is sad that everyone is telling Kenrick that he will have to kill the evil one. All Kenrick wants to do is rescue his father and bring him home. That is the same thing that the beggar in the town of Grimwind Vell told him. I wonder why the beggar and Nagy think that Kenrick has to kill the evil one. If I were Kenrick, I would want to do the same thing and just rescue my father. No kidding. At least he has a friend, even if it is an ugly goblin. They make quite a pair. Even when both of them approach the forest, they argue about whether or not to go into it. They end up separating, but eventually Nagy comes back to make sure he's okay. Poor Nagy. He was so frightened going to the forest called Grimwood because of the nasty fae. You know he must have heard some terrible stories about the fae if Nagy went with him through the other part of the forest despite Grimclaws. Can you imagine seeing huge creatures in the sky that swoop down and grab goblins? Oh, no way. Their loyalty towards one another, though, begins to develop into a pretty strong bond. At the end, they come to realize that they are equally worried about the welfare of each other. I wish I had this kind of relationship with a goblin. You must have a strong bond with someone to put your life in danger like that. What did you think when he first went into the forest without Nagy? I was so nervous for Kenrick and Nagy when they separated. I bet Kenrick was terrified when he encountered the Fae for the first time. Good thing he tied himself to the tree he was sleeping in. He would have fallen out when the Fae first approached him. I was worried when he tied himself to the tree. What if he had to get down quickly? Seems like that could have been a problem. Good thing it wasn't. Kenrick was lucky to have the moonstone the beggar gave him in Grimwood Vale. The Fae called it the Luna Lith, and it guaranteed a safe passage through Grimwood. I wondered if they were going to honor the safe passage, since some of the Fae said that they were not playing by the old rules. Good thing they weren't the ones in charge. Once the Fae realized that Kenrick was on his way to find Mordig, they said it was a good thing that he had the stone. I'm glad that Kenrick got some more answers to his questions about his father going missing. Mordig is pretty awful if he's taking all the blacksmiths in the country only to forge him a blade. He is just awful. What do you think of the Fae? The Fae sound like really cool mystical creatures, but some seem mean. Can you imagine seeing a pale glowing creature at night with leaf-shaped eyes? They almost seem ghost-like, and I don't like ghosts. But the color of their eyes were cool. 
I'm glad Nagy showed up finally, but I was surprised that he did. Wow. I think when Nagy showed up in Grimwood because he was really concerned about Kenrick, that is a true friend, that they were stunned that a goblin came into their forest. They really dislike goblins. Good thing Sonora the Elder Fae explained to the other Fae that they were once friends with goblins.